Understand it's kind of subtle, but this is hot new research, brand new research. Besides gastritis and ulcers, which happen in 5 to 6% of our patients every year, the other big complication is iron deficiency anemia. Okay? It happens in 5 to 6% of our female patients, but it never happens in our guys. And that's not quite true. We've actually had one. So wait a minute. It happens to all of our, a lot of our female patients, almost never, never to our guys. Now it turns out, even if you don't have an MGB and go out into the society of America, lots of women have low iron. About 3%. 3% of women have low iron. And they haven't got an MGB, and almost no men have low iron. If you're a guy with low iron and you go to your doctor's office, you know what they say? We have to find the cancer. Because it's so uncommon for men to have low iron, whereas it's very common for women to have low iron. Why? Because every month they throw away a couple of pads full of iron. Okay? That's in your menstrual cycle. So, back to our patients post-op, the very first thing we need to tell you is don't donate blood, don't give away iron in your blood, and think very carefully about your menstrual cycle. If you're losing a lot of blood there, stop it. Go talk to your gynecologist and consider the various treatments that can decrease your blood loss. That's job number one. Now number two, I bet you nickel, if you got low iron, your doctor has prescribed to you some iron tablets. Okay? They're not quite worthless, but they're next door to worthless. Why? Because iron tablets are basically rust. They're iron sulfate. If you go scrape the bumper of your car, well, <laughs> scrape the bumper of an old car, now they're all covered in plastic. But <laughs> when I was a boy, the bumper's rusted. You scrape that off, that's rust. Now mix that in water. You can stir that a long time, nothing's going to happen. So when you swallow that, that ferrous or ferric iron is not absorbable. So many of our patients have had to have intravenous iron to build up their iron. And that's a good choice. But more importantly is new news. So here's what you want to write down. Proferrin. P-R-O-F-E-R-R-I-N. Proferrin. Okay? A bunch of, uh, I guess they're scientists, doctors, food researchers, I don't know who did it. They noted that you and I can absorb iron from meat easily. Because the iron molecule, the iron ion, is wrapped in the hemoglobin molecule. So when you and I eat steak, the iron that's in that steak can be easily absorbed. So one possibility would be just send you out and eat tons of steak. But that's kind of hard to do. Um, so what they said, hi, good morning. Uh, so what they said is, why don't we wrap the iron molecule in a little protein peptide kind of hemoglobin-like ring, and maybe we can absorb it better. And so they did that. They thought they had something. Then they said, how can we test it? We have to find somebody who's losing blood every day and test and compare those people when they were getting their intravenous iron and compare it to those people who get the proferrin. Where can we find people who are losing blood every day? At the dialysis center. So they went to the dialysis center, talked to the nephrologist, and the nephrologist said, we have to transfuse our nephrology dialysis patients every month, every couple months, because they're all losing iron every day in the artificial kidney pump. So the researcher said, stop it. Don't give them any more iron. We're going to just give them the proferrin. And 95% never had to have IV iron. Amazon.com sells it. Colorado Labs is the company that sells it. And it's hot new research. And that wasn't my idea. One of my patients is actually an oncologist from Michigan. And uh, he told me, he said, oh, you're a dummy. You should be giving your patients proferrin. And he was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
That's the new...